this is Nikki Freed. I'm here at CrossFit Future teaching a workshop on proper rowing techniques. I am an alumni of the Ohio State University Women's Varsity Rowing Program. I learned in 2002 how to row a boat and I've been loving it ever since. I row with the Greater Columbus Rowing Association currently. I'm looking forward to teaching this. The first thing is <clears throat> your foot position. You want your strap to be coming across right here where your foot flexes. So depending on how tall you are or how large your feet are, you'll have to adjust these down. So you have these little things, you can move them up if you're shorter, you can move them down if you're really tall. I generally put mine at three open holes showing at the top. That just works about well for me. This can change based on the shoes that you're wearing and a lot of different factors if you want to wear shoes, if you just want to wear socks, some options there. But I usually just roll in my shoes because I'm usually doing something else as well. You want to make sure you're securely strapped in, have your handle down low, and the basics of the stroke start at your finish, build at your finish. So in terms of rowing, this is your finish, this is your catch position, your drive is where you're going through the water, your recovery is where you go to get back up to that drive. So from out here at the finish, you're pulling in and you want to try to pull in as straight a line as possible. We're minimizing wasted effort. Shortest distance between two points, straight line and all. I don't want to be coming up here if my point's right down there. I want to be drawing it straight across at that tabletop, which ends up being about like the lower part of your ribs. Now, your arms draw back past your body. We're not out here like we got chicken wings. Shoulders are nice and open, chest is broad, and your shoulders are just stuck right down on your back. Now, your body position, is at about one or 11 o'clock. This was a clock up here. My back layback is the 11 o'clock position, and I only go forward to about one o'clock. So it's not a lot of body angle here, but it's a slight layback just off of the 90 degrees. You're holding the, or the handles loosely. It's just with my fingertips so that my wrists can stay flat the whole way through. Now, from here, you extend your arms. Body doesn't move anywhere. Easiest way to think about it is it's arms, body, legs. Legs, body, arms. Same thing, just in reverse order each way. So we come here from the finish, arms extend out, body pivots forward. Now, body doesn't pivot forward. Body doesn't hunch forward so that these arms are coming off of here because now I've lost my big muscles in the back here. I want to keep those large muscles engaged as much as possible. Big muscles do a lot better job than the little tiny ones for covering all of those things. So let's use them to their advantage. We lean forward. At this point, we break the knees. Once the arms are all the way forward and extended, bodies forward, we keep this body position locked in and then slowly come up the slide to about perpendicular, sorry, yeah, perpendicular to the ground for here. I don't want to be coming forward or over compressing because now my knees are over my toes. That's not nearly effective. Most effective ways to be shins are parallel. Shins are perpendicular to the ground. Now this is my full compression. Body's still up, head is still high, not reaching forward because then I've lost those major muscles in the back again. Sitting up nice and tall. Now for the drive, it's just a reversal of all of those things. I'm up here at the catch. Heels come down, feet make good contact with those foot plates, legs extend. Body holds its angle. Body pivots back to finish that off, and arms come through. And then it's right back out again, and going. Now your handles should never stop. So it's up to the catch, back around to the finish. Thanks. So you want to remember to stay nice and tall, coming up in high, right into those lower ribs, reaching out, pivoting the body forward and locking that position in while you come up the slide. You want to think about it as a one to two ratio, one second drive, two second recovery. One, two, one, one, two. And that's the basics of the rowing stroke. 
So this back here is the flywheel. There is a, essentially a paddle wheel inside here. And then this is the damper that allows air in. So this is fully open. You can see all of the way in there. As you bring it down, it constricts some of that airflow. So one is the lowest setting. There's hardly any air in there, hardly any air coming out. Really the easiest way to go. This is your more aerobic workout. Up here, lots of air in there. So it takes a lot of force to push that air out there. And a lot more air is getting in, so it's slowing down faster as you go in. So most recommendations are anywhere from three to six on here for your setting. If you're going for approximating a feel of water, like if you were gonna be rowing in a boat and trying to train for something like that, it's about a four, four and a half. <clears throat> and when you're doing these settings, you can play around with this, see what feels right for you, see what level of effort. If you have a lot more, if you're better at doing those like real strong pulls, you can bump this up a little bit. If you're better at doing like a quick turnaround, doing more of a sprint style thing, bump it down. So everything that you need to do on this is all about staying smooth and giving the best possible transfer of your energy into the handle, into the mechanisms in here. So it's all about engaging that motion all the way through. So connecting your feet to your hands and your body to that handle and you're finishing that pull all the way through and giving yourself a good recovery. This, that calculation is called the drag factor. So drag in water is the drag of the resistance of your shell as it's gliding through the water. In here, it's the resistance of the flywheel to air. You can actually find this on your display. If I can remember how to get to it here. All right, so here's the drag factor. What did you pass? All right, so turning on the machine, you can go into more options and then display your drag factor. So when I row, that's my drag factor. That's like my penalty that's getting engaged there and how it's calculating. So this goes into how the computer calculates your split times, your watts, your calories, everything like that. You wanna make sure that this is down below 130. If you're interested in looking at it, this is definitely one of those nitpicky things where if you wanna get like really technical about it, you can go and have fun with this kind of thing. Because if I bump this up, Here. So, and you can also see how much it's, but this is a much higher drag factor. I'm having to work a lot harder for each stroke, whereas I can drop it all the way down. And I'm producing very little drag. Now, once you start getting into your workouts and, uh, sorry, it's moving a little fast there. Once you start getting into your workouts, you can start going back and comparing that drag factor to your effective times. So you can go back in and be like, okay, this is what I was rowing now. My drag factor was probably about this. And these were the times that I was getting. Can I play around with that? Do I get a better time when I'm at a higher drag factor? So. It's one of the ways that the machine gives you some feedback. All right, so arm mistakes. The first one is overgripping. If anything other than this part of your fingers is on your handle, you're overgripping way too much. So this hurts. <laughs> I don't know why you would ever want to do this because this is putting my wrists at a really tight angle coming up through here. I can't even like get my shoulders relaxed to come up and keep this up here. So if you're feeling that like real tense grip, or even if you're gripping up where your hands
emotions are coming down and you're making it more of this like jerking through arm motion, it's ineffective. It's a waste of energy. Keep these relaxed. And then, like my one coach at Spelling Camp said, meat hooks on the end of noodles. My fingers are gonna take all of the weight. There's nothing on my palms here. Um, it does, but you still want it to be a little stable. So thumbs back here, thumbs like gently underneath. There's some people that don't like the piano player approach where you can take your fingers off of your handle up there. I think it's perfectly fine if it reminds you to relax those hands. Because I don't need to push this up here and keep that pushed away from me up there. Like, it wants to be pulled forward anyway. I just have to hold on to it while it goes. So over gripping is the first one. So gripping over top, gripping underneath, holding on to things really tight, like really working around there dragging things around, so you want it to be nice and loose all the way through and around. Alright, the next one is getting those elbows way out. So, we're not doing push-ups. We're not doing diamond push-ups here. We're doing more like Chaturanga Dandasana. <laughs> Anybody that does yoga. So, arms or elbows are coming right back past the body. <laughs> so, I remember that day. And this is the no-no. Coming with those elbows out really high because you also have the tendency to pull up really high. Now remember, we want to pull in down here, not up here. Lower rib cage, like right at the base of your sternum. Next one is breaking your arms too early. So. If I'm feeling that, oh, okay, there we go. I just took all of the work away from these nice big muscles back here and put it all in these little tiny biceps. So keep those shoulders locked in. This should feel engaged right back here through your neck. You don't want to be tense so you can't wiggle your head around. Nice and loose, loose neck, but shoulders engaged. So you can come back through and let those arms stay long through the drive. And then it's just around at the very end. So it's the leg drive, the layback, and then around and through. All right, so on to the back. <laughs> so aside from this one where you're breaking too early. So good strokes. Is opening the back too early. So, opening up before those legs are gone. So I just took this effectiveness of this lever, and now I'm all the way back here at that same point. So now I'm not going at that same speed, and I've lost that swing back that's gonna help pull that blade through. So there is a little bit of a swing back to get that blade the rest of the way through, or the handle the rest of the way around. You can tell I'm used to dealing with clothes. <laughs> so you don't want to open up too early because you're overlapping that effort. So if my back is opening at the same time my legs are driving, I'm losing a little bit of both. I really want to keep as much of this leg drive as I can. So that's my biggest muscles. That's my powerhouse. That's where most of this force comes from. Everything else is stabilizing. So your finish, your layback, is a continuation of here. And this is where your abs burn. Remember that? Be okay with it. Get them stronger. <clears throat> All right. The other one at the other end, instead of opening up too soon here, it's overreaching at the catch. Now, who can tell me what's wrong with this one? You're, You're not at over. one o'clock. <laughs> I'm way hunched over. So I've actually lost all this muscles. Everything here is tight and pulling in. None of that strength, like all that strength is gone now. So it's better to be here. And if your flexibility doesn't allow you to get all the way up so that your body's like almost resting on your legs, better to be up here than to be here. Because yeah, from here to here, I get a couple more inches, but I've lost all my muscle engagement. 
So stay long. And it's okay to not get that far. Even if your flexibility, for those of you with the tight legs and tight hips, even if this is your forward body position, as long as you stay with it and keep that core engaged, that's fine. If that's where your body is at, that's where you need to make the adjustment until you can get that flexibility, because it is a very much a lot of hip flexibility and ankle flexibility to get up here into this full compression. All right, the other thing is overlay back. Again, same thing like at the catch. I can get a few more inches, but now I'm putting my whole low back at risk. So all of this is collapsing down. It's really hard to keep this in a good position, and I'm also probably gonna be reaching way too high. My arms aren't gonna be able to draw through. I'm gonna be breaking my wrists. Lots of bad things happen from this one. So when you're going, you really don't wanna over play back. So this back. Just a little bit past that 90 degree, so you can still feel like you're sitting up nice and tall. The other thing that you can do at that end is you can check in here. Like if I've started collapsing a little bit down here, losing that lower curve, remember to sit up tall right at that catch. Keep that core engaged. Don't let that low back get lost. Things that happen with the legs, how to watch out for those. So, mentioned this one before, shooting the slide. So, handle didn't move all that far. My seat moved a lot farther. I wanna make sure that that seat and that handle are moving the same amount or more. So we wanna keep it nice and long, nice and smooth, not letting that seat go first. You'll hear it in the difference. You can't quite hear that engagement at the catch. That's shooting the slide. That one was shooting the slide. This one is rushing the slide. So that one, I got some impressive numbers there. I made it up to like a 30 stroke per minute and a two or like a 150. But I didn't have any control. I didn't have any engagement with my muscles here. My posture was all over the place. It wasn't very effective really. Last two are compressing issues. So when you're coming up and your body angle is too far forward, you're losing your engagement in your abdomen and you're over compressing up here. So like your shoulders end up down on your knees. So leaning too far forward. As you can see how much lower down I am now than if I sit up. You can keep it open. This is where downward force applied, stretching this muscle out going to be the most optimal, most effective, straight through there. All right. So those are the basic 